This is what the surgeon gave me today. It's an oral rinse that is an antibiotic. So my mouth is that thing there. There's some infection. But I want to show you, I have a birth defect, which is making things a little bit harder for me. I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to try. Paisano? What? Could you come here and show them my, try to do my birth defect? I know, right. we're crazy, but it's life. It's the internet, man. Sorry. I don't know if you're going to be able to. I think I will. All right. <laughs> That shit. <laughs> it's creepy up in there. Ah. Uh. <laughs> now let me show you a normal one. Just load the jack that lid up. <laughs> no. Jack it up so we can see what a normal one looks like. Come on. Uh, hurry up. I don't want this to be long. That's. Let me see my flashlight. Normal is a big old, just a wide palette. Hey, didn't your mother tell you not to put things in your mouth? I did. I got across the name different style from it. And he's not lying. Yes, he, as a younger child, I think it was these nuts and bolts that he picked up from the ground out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh... He did get something called Clostidium, Clostidium difficile. And it's a very hard bacteria to get rid of. It was a little bit rough. It was really rough on me because we keep we kept having to do poop, uh, what do you call those? Samples. He had to poop. I had to scoop and put them in jars for them to be tested for this bacteria. The reason, the way I knew that something was wrong, he took a poop and his, um, it was when I was still wiping him, he took a poop and I went in to wipe him, his poop was in a sheath of blood. And the reason that was is his intestines were bleeding. So, yes, he has autism, he had a problem with uh, putting things in his mouth all the time. And so he had a couple of things go wrong with just putting stupid things in his mouth. I don't want to. I don't want to embarrass him because he's older now. But uh, it was even hard when we went out to eat because under the table people put gum. It was very hard. Very very hard. Oh, the joys of autism. Anyway, that is my. That should have been fixed when I was a baby, and the dentist was afraid that the denture would not suction up there. Um, the, when I first got my denture, it suctioned up there like, wow. But then, like I told you, that first dentist, I don't know what she did. It does not do like it used to. And today, I... The, my, the, lid of, the roof of my mouth is extremely sore and I'm feeling the top of my denture and there was actually a sharp piece that it's caused a little sore up there so I had a buffer it's not a sander but it like sand it buffs or shines things so I did that I don't know if it helped it or not I don't have anything thin enough to get it's right at the roof, but my roof, my dentures go like this. So right at the top, and then it's, at, it's very weird, but I was afraid to do too much. I don't want to ruin them. And, um, anyway. So, boy, it, this is just killing the crap out of me. It hurts so bad. It's... So, I know, I'm watching the Jokers. 
I figured that this would calm down. It has only gotten worse. I was using an oil gel peroxide rinse and scope and salt, warm salt water rinses. And it just, uh, I had some problems when they pulled these teeth down here. They did, it didn't get numb. I have a feeling there was some kind of infection in there. He checked, he said no. But maybe it was down in my jaw and it's working its way out. I don't know. But it's not going very easy for me. And uh, it is the story of my life. I have a lot of diseases, so I, I don't know. I have a really poor immune system. I was born with a lot of birth defects. All of them inside, not out in the open. Um, and I'm thankful for that, but there's a lot, I've had a lot of surgeries to reconstruct my digestive system. Um, but I guess my mom said that the dentist never mentioned the roof of my mouth, nor did the baby doctor, you know, and they looked inside the baby's mouth. Um, I was not sick when I was a infant. I was sick, but nobody knew. It was just a lot of vomiting, stuff like that. Oh, it didn't come out, didn't get worse to where I was being hospitalized until I think the first time I remember may have been like seven, six or seven. I don't know. I remember only because of photos. I remember incidents. But, um, yeah, so, it's been a very rough journey at times, and as a young teenager, uh, I was told that I probably wouldn't make it to 18, and that was like a green light for me to become an animal. I figured, I'm not going to see 18, uh, I was going to go out with a bang, so I became a wild child, because... My brain just figured, why, why not if I'm just going to croak? And unfortunately, my disease is very painful. It's pancreatitis. Um, so definitely, you know, I really just thought, I'm just going to go all balls in, you know? And then at 18, <laughs> I was like, hey, I wasn't going to see 18. And uh, so around 18 and a half, I kind of cut things off. I calmed down. I found God again. I had God before, but I just really didn't care, I guess, you know. So I kind of calmed down at around 18 and a half. Uh, quit drinking and smoking pot. I think I was 19 by the time I quit most of the stuff. The hardest thing to quit was cigarettes. It took me quite a while to stop smoking cigarettes. That was the thing that had me the most. But. So I really, you know, once I passed that 18, I was like, hmm, I guess, uh, I, guess I am going to see 18. So, and then I got married, and of course they said, you will never have children. You'll never be able to hold a child in your womb. You'll never be able to keep a fetus. You will never get pregnant. Did I use birth control? No, I didn't. And I got married, and the same week I got married, I was so sick. I thought I was dying, actually. That's how sick I was. And, of course, I had the Egyptian flu. In nine months, I was going to be a mummy. And all I can say to that is I am so thankful that in my wild child few years, I didn't get pregnant. So thankful for that. I mean, that was a miracle on its own because that would have, back then, it would have like totally shamed my family, something fierce. And I just don't know, I don't know what my life would have been like if I would have had a baby way back then. I mean, I would have dealt with it, you know, but oh well. I'm gonna go. I just figured I would show you that. I know. I always, I am a TMI girl. And partial reason why I'm a TMI girl is because when you're in the hospital a lot, you just get 
no, you, you, you kind of learn to have no, uh, I don't want to say dignity, because I have a lot of dignity, but you're just not easily embarrassed, I guess, so definitely I think it's because of all my time in the hospitals. Uh, you just lose embarrassment. You're just so used to doctors want to see everything. You just you just get past it. it. In the beginning, you're like, I'm shy. And then after a while, you're like, drop them drawers for the whole school. Not the whole school. I was in a teaching hospital, so a lot of times the doctor would come in with about 30 students. So that's what I mean, the whole school. Um, a lot of times, you know, it wasn't just the doctor. He had a team with him that was learning. But it was a really good hospital. Robert Wood Johnson Hospital in New Jersey was one of them. Uh, I'm done. So I'm supposed to rinse my mouth out with that stuff twice a day. Try to swish it around, keep it in there, but he also said to take a Q-tip and really poke these bad spots to try to open it up a little and get the stuff in there. I, I actually sat with the um, mouthwash in my mouth and just sat there. I watched TV with it. You don't swallow it. I just sat, I watched TV, it was sitting right on that, I figure. You know, the the more that's seeping in there, the better, but it hurts. It hurts really bad. And now, the roof of my mouth hurts up front here. And all the way in the back, my son said that there's actually a pimple with a head on it. So, I don't know what that is. I looked. It's very tiny. I think it may be from the denture. has this ridge that I think she should sand off. Um, I don't have the tools here to be sanding anything, um, and because there's problems with my denture, I don't want to touch anything. I want them liable, not me. So I think the back has to be sanded. There's this ridge. I don't think it should have be been there. But I think it's too long, which I've told them already that it touches my uvula. Um, they should have. I have just, just such a disappointment. But I'm just going to stay calm. If it comes out that she's not going to fix it, then I'm going to, you'll probably see me cry a bit. But I have been able to stay calm about it because I keep, I have this, this trust in this dentist that she is not going to do me wrong. I just have so much trust in her. She is such a nice woman. Uh, her name is Dr. Williams. I'll tell you that because there's like a million Dr. Williams out there in the world. But she is an awesome, awesome human being. She's the type of person that if she was my neighbor, I would just be the happiest girl. Because she is just such a, a like, she seems like such an honest and down to earth, real person. You know, I like her. So... I just have so much trust in her that I am not, I, I mean, I am upset, but you know what I mean. I am not going to let it get to me until she's like, sorry, can't help you. Until that day, I'm going to just stay cool and keep it all together. But I do want to say, you know what, I am terminally ill and I want whatever time left that I have here I want to enjoy it. I want to be happy. I want to be able to smile. I want to do my videos. I have, I have, let's see, I have three channels. I have this one. I may have four channels. I have a channel. It's just me, Diane63. That um, they're all attached to this that I do reviews on. I have another channel about enemas. I know, it's gross. But the Annas have been keeping my liver healthy, so I do videos on it. And then I have another channel that I haven't really done anything on yet, so it doesn't really have a name, it just has some initials. 
but I haven't tackled it yet because I'm just so busy. <sighs> All right, I'm going to go. I'm sorry. I know I talk a lot, but I need you. I need to be able to get it off my chest. So I can't wait until you can see me as a real person again. I don't consider this me. This is not the real person that I am. This is not me. No. I will be very happy when you see me and you see me smiling and you see me proud of smiling. I just, I can't wait for that day that you see me. I want you to see me. <laughs> Please let them see me. <laughs> All right. Here's my sweetie. He's here. He's ready for sleepies too. You tired, honey? Are you tired? Hmm? Isn't he adorable? Are you tired, sweetie? Hmm? Are you ready for cuddles? Hmm? Are you ready for cuddles? I know you are. I can tell. I'm tired too. I'm not even going to work tonight. I'm just going to go see these two. No working for mommy tonight. Okay. We'll just work tomorrow. No, no, I'm not going anywhere. I, I, I didn't mean it like that. It's okay. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying home with you. I'm staying here with you. No worries. Okay. We're going to watch TV. All right. I hope you have a good night. Bye. No, no, bud. We're staying. See, it's just a camera. Lay down. Lay down and relax. It's just a camera. That's all I'm talking about. I'm just talking about this.